interest. Do you want to explain to us what sort of an evening you had? So, I was up in Leeds yesterday seeing um, my friend and I took the train back. It was, we sat at the station for an hour. So we were already an hour late before we left. Then we left, there was a raging, raging storm. Cut a long story short, it took three and a half hours longer than it should have taken at one point. We, had, we were stopped in the middle of nowhere. There was plastic sheeting on the line. What does that mean? Well, there and was. there was only the driver and the guard, and that's all he kept saying, we can't do anything, we can't help you. There's no service, there's no this, there's no that. There's only two of us. I felt like saying, can you stop saying that? Because I'm feeling really vulnerable because I was in a total carriage on my own. I went either side of the carriage, there was nobody in either carriage. There was three carriages, totally empty. God. And we were in the middle of nowhere and then all the power went. Oh my so God. it was dark, a storm shaking the train. Oh my God, I had like 10% battery left. There wasn't enough light, so they went to the battery and there wasn't enough light to read. Wow. And I was there for ages, so I'm absolutely fucking And now what are you doing now? So I'm having a few of my friends over from the Himalayan trip. We're gonna have a little garden party. Because no. it's nice out actually. So I'm making uh, chicken kebabs. Mm. I'm making falafel. I'm making hummus with one with pit pine nuts and the other one with little bits of fried lamb on. Um, I'm making yeah, falafel, hummus, tabbouleh um, and baklava. Ooh. And what else am I making? Halloumi, roast potatoes, because whenever Kaz sees my roast potatoes, Kaz who's dancing tits off, whenever she sees my roast potatoes on um, Instagram, she always leaves me a mes message saying, when I come to see you, well, I'm asking for a friend, actually. Will there be roast potatoes? Mm. Oh. So I've got to make lots of roast potatoes, which reminds me I need to pull potatoes. So, look, that's really nice marinade, guys. Yeah. Lemon, no, no salt, don't put the salt in your mouth. Lemon, olive oil, garlic, thyme and oregano. Just leave it like that and out of the fridge now and it will cook in seconds. So whilst Nadia has a load of women over, I, it is the first big cinematic day of the calendar since lockdown. And um, Tenet is released in the cinemas today. It is a big day for global cinema chains. So me and Annie Dye are going to go and see Tenet late this afternoon. And we're going to be reviewing it and getting it up on the channel pretty prom prom promptly because uh, it's not released in America yet. It's got a delay in, in, in the US. It's not often we get films before America. So it's a big, big deal. Um, obviously, footfall in cinemas today is going to indicate whether the sustainability of the old fashioned cinema system is going to be able to be, be maintained. Um, and in about 45 minutes after I've done the coffee moaning, I'm a guest on a podcast called by the sober experiment the two lovely oh, yeah. ladies who uh, were part of the sober sessions i did on youtube so we're doing a, a chat about sobriety uh, and all of that for, for an hour so i will send uh, i will pop a link under here for that because it will be up by then so more importantly falafel really nice falafel now you don't have to do this but what i'm going to do is add very finely chopped mint and parsley to it for a bit of extra bit it's totally fine exactly as it is there's loads of shit ones. This is really good. Alfez, Dina put me onto it. I am, I always get a little bit nervous. I get a little bit shy and a little bit edgy. And I feel very, I like to, I'm not like Nadia. She can just drop into something and just talk. I like to be pre-prepared, pre-ordered. Even if I go to an AA meeting in physical person, I like to be there 15 minutes early so I can get myself in the right headspace. You could argue it ends up making you feel even more nervous, but it's the way I am. I just do. So I do feel actually quite, <laughs> shy I think is the word shy I just wanted to say actually in a, an honest YouTuber way because you know I was all very jolly there I'm going to be honest with you guys I am struggling a bit at the minute yeah I had a bad day I, I you know when, when I when that was the first time I've been to Euston station yesterday and you know it's like all the stations in London, you know what takeaways there are, you sort of plan, oh, I'll get there in enough time, I'll pop into accessorise, I'll pop into boots, I'll pop into... I was really shocked. 
because it's a real hub, isn't it, Eastern mm. Station? There's loads of different, you know, every every kind of like meat, you know, Honest Burgers, Yo Sushi, da 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 da, real like me- metropolitan city station. Everything closed. One thing open, my Itsu, with half the shelves filled. Accessorised, closed down, boarded up. Not even we're just closed for a bit. Shut down. Boots, shut down. Now, these places, no matter what time of the day or night you went to Euston, they were heaving. Yeah. Absolutely heaving. No coffee shop, no Costa Coffee. Couldn't get a coffee on Euston That's Station. Crazy. So I just felt I was so depressed because I was like, not because I couldn't get a coffee, though that was annoying, but it was just like all those jobs, mm. all those people, all this life. And then later on, when I was coming through Brixton after the horrendous journey, the cab driver said to me, look at this, look at it. He goes, usually I'm ducking, I'm diving, I'm worried about people being drunk in the streets, jumping out. And he said the same, he goes, where is everyone? Well, it's like an apocalypse. Well, let's hope that in a week really? it's a bit different because a lot of people are actually on their summer holidays. And we can Please believe God, that they actually let exist. it be. Yeah, so anyway. All right, well, we're going to get on with coffee moaning. I know, everyone's feeling very, very fragile. So, though you might see me being very jolly on Instagram, and a lot of the time I am, I just wanted to like keep it real there as well and say, I think sometimes I find it hard to say that I'm struggling because I know I'm really lucky. I've got a nice job, I've got a nice house, I've got a nice husband. But whatever your circumstances are, you're still feeling what you're feeling, aren't you? So, yeah. If anyone else is feeling the same, I feel your pain. Make falafel and fart lots. Yeah. So we are at the Picture House in Central, in Central London, which is one of our regular cinemas. We've met up with Nanny Di. I was just posting on Instagram that this is a critical day for cinema. So how the box office receipts are totted up today, however much, however busy the football is, it will dictate really the short term future of British cinemas. So it's a big deal. And then we're gonna go, <laughs> then we're gonna go back to Nanny Di's and we're gonna go and review the film. Uh, and here we are. She doesn't wanna go. She's saying don't let me go. She's saying don't go. Oh, Kaz, dance your tits off for us for a second. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Come on, everybody. Such a good Come on. Yeah. Woo! Where I wanna be. be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate a box <laughs> Jesus Christ, I hate those oh, box sets. Anyway, I'm saying goodbye to my lovely girls and I don't want them to go, but they've got to go. Because you got like those, it's a school night, it's a bit annoying. Yeah, it's school night. <laughs> bye bye, my gorgeous ears. What? Be- dare I ask? What is that? Reju- rejuvenation. Coming rejuvenation of what? Everything. <laughs> No, really. You what know, is it? What it's a I, load of silver balls. Right. I think, you know, the principle when you sit on something and it shakes you up and down like that? No. <laughs> well, we were going to buy one. You know, it's something that you bounces you. Agitates. Yeah. I think this is supposed to do the same thing. It gives you these vibrations. Right? So you're basically using your vibrator. This isn't because we just got it, we don't, it was given to us, we don't know what it is. It's supposed to be very good for Parkinson's. Oh! It's it helps with your balance. Yeah, it's um, quite also, it does seem to be so is he cool. trying to have Parkinson's again? No, we're, gonna, we're not going to have Parkinson's. He's just obsessed that he's going to have Parkinson's. Oh. Well, Julia got it for me, actually. I haven't okay. put hands on it yet. <laughs> it, it's a good way of exercising while you're sitting down. Okay. Sure. Well, well, great. <laughs> I don't well, think I'll be borrowing it. Let me it. try it. What do I think it would be? And when you like it, it's, 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 ma- it's used as a massage thing as well. Oh. Up and down your back. I don't think it's good for the back of the neck. <laughs> oh, you're not supposed to do it yourself. You're supposed to get someone. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, and I don't think you're using that right, Dad. Oh, God. Oh, my God, he's moving. <laughs> what, what are you going <laughs> to Jesus Christ. Oh, Dad, be careful. Be careful. <laughs> supposed to go behind your back. Why is your left? Not working. Eh? Why is your left arm? Not Why isn't your left arm? Well, I've discovered that my left arm doesn't work. 
<laughs> oh God, careful, Dad! No. You're gonna take you're gonna take your shoulder out. <laughs> you might take off. No. no Don't, Dad. Dad you might fly out the window. <laughs> Oh well, my God! We just got it, so you know. Yeah, we don't overdo it. No, I'm gonna sit down now. <laughs> Are you gonna oh, well, right now? <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you're having a lovely evening. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, guys. I am going to do a bit of a day in the life of a two-bit TV presenter. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm just going to try and remember <laughs> to record my day <laughs> because my memory is so shit. I might forget by about 11 o'clock, but um, yeah, let's have a go. So I got up at quarter past six this morning with the sweats. God knows why, not menopausal, just sweating. Very unusual for me. Um, I've just got weird, like, but, uh, that's what greets me this morning in a day of the life of a two-bit TV presenter. Um, yeah, I just feel anxious again this morning. And um, it's really, really horrible and I'm really, really sick of it. And it's funny, because I can't, I, as I say, I woke up early and last, thing, last night I said to Mark, now listen, make sure tomorrow you do everything to look after yourself. Um, you know, get up, take the dogs for a walk first thing, do a meditation, do a bit of it, do all of that before you start work, just so that you're just calm at that bit of self-care because sometimes we just forget to do this stuff. We're good at advising it, but then we're not very good at doing it ourselves. So I gave him this great big spiel. I'm doing the same, I'm getting up early, da, da, da. I came down. Ten minutes after I woke up, I realised I was scrolling through bloody scroll of terror. <sighs> so now that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a morning stretch and then I'm going to um, just have a wee meditation, maybe about three or four minutes, just to try and calm my uh, global pandemic anxiety down before I head off to the studios. <laughs> Is it Toffee? Oh no, it's Gigi. There she is. She must know I'm feeling anxious. She's such a good dog. Workout done. There she is. There's Lucy. While I watch the news. Because I have to get into loose women knowing everything that's happened. <sighs> In the world of news. So that's one very miserable part of my day. Turning bloody sky on and listening to all the horrors first thing. That didn't help my anxious feelings. <laughs> Just said to the security guys there, anyone else hate global pandemics? And they put their hands up. You know, I just miss the little things like, you know, a little smile with the driver, a little chat. Nobody bothers to chat in the cars anymore because you can't, you keep not being able to hear each other because these bloody things. So um, I'm going in now, I'll get my temperature taken and go see the girls. Morning, how are you? Did you take your mask Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. I'm successful with my temperature. Woo! I'm winning. Life's good. I've got a successful temperature. <laughs> it's really funny because as you look into the um, into the weird camera that tells you your temperature and then it says 38.4, you are successful. So this is another thing that I know hate like we all do like we all do you know it's just now as you pass the corridor it's so hard to actually smile look you don't know i'm smiling i'm beaming and i love those little i love those moments with human beings that are just gone <laughs> i suppose if i throw my head back then you know i'm laughing here we go so it's some time later. I'm now beautiful. 
I miss the makeup art. It's taken me ages to get my makeup to look because it's you, you do have you do makeup is different for on telly than it would be just for your life. Um, yeah, so look at the state of it already. Um, but so next thing that we are going to do is we're going to go and have another meeting and then we go on air and then I'm going to be doing some uh, interviews with Mark for our book and then. Yeah, and then I'm going to go and have lunch with Kay and Jane. And then I'm going to go have drinks with Lee, because Lee is heading back to Grimsby. Lee, my friend Lee, who you know well. He's heading back to Grimsby. He's got to leave his flat, so he's leaving London on Saturday, and we're all really sad about it. I'm really sad about it. Um, so we're giving him a little send-off. Um, but I'll try and film what I can in between all of that. We are now in the studio. Jane is there. Trying to mic myself. Trying to mic herself, because nobody can touch anybody. I can't actually. We're not allowed to touch anybody. <laughs> so we end up with our mics round here and down the back. This over here is Jack. Jack, move forward. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> he is the one of the most wonderful people at ITV. And he's put a bow tie on his screen to keep us happy. And gloves. This is our reality now. Like our poor sound people literally stand over there watching us make a right pig's ass out of everything. And they have to stand over there. Mm. We've all put our hands up to the fact that we don't like global pandemics today. No. Hands up. Oh. Hands up. Bored <laughs> We're bored now. We're bored now. I feel like tearing all my clothes off and just licking the pavement. Oh, don't do that. Mm. So we were supposed to be, I was supposed to be giving Kay a wee present today on the show, but we didn't have time, so I'm going to give it to her now. Do you want your little present? Oh, is this a joke? No, no, no. So, as usual, <laughs> I was supposed to film the whole day, but the day sort of took over, so I didn't film. I was even going to film in the car on the way back, but then I couldn't because I had to have a very long call with my agent. So, now I'm just back, and um, I've just come straight up to the room, and it's really nice. Mark's downstairs, a bit angry, but we're not saying that. I'm just going to stay up here until he's eaten. Because when he's angry, it's a bit like a premenstrual woman. He won't admit that he's angry. I'm not angry. What are you saying? I really, I really, really don't appreciate you reducing me to angry. I'm going, okay, all right, I'll see you in a bit. Um, yeah, oh God, why is that light doing that? It's really annoying. Anyway, so Kiki's got some friends next door. Maddie's staying at friends. So I'm just going to sit up here. I'm going to lie up here and I'm going to watch something really crap on the Hey You. And that's the end of my day. Hey guys, how you doing? Don't know where this is going to appear in anything. Uh, I felt really down about vlogging in recent weeks. Really down, I don't know why. Just uh, not about doing it, just about not wanting to feel like we're just filming any old rubbish which is the reason there's been less, because we want to keep it real, we want to keep it authentic. Um, but look, the park, this is a Friday morning, early, and uh, they're still disallowing cars because of people, I think, overcrowding and having parties and sort of impromptu kind of gatherings, social gatherings. Um, I'm sort of also wrecking to do the interstitial shots to finally get my short done. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just one of those days where, I don't know, just the whole, I feel like we've been in some strange reality, alternate reality, like a Marvel film or something. That was so strange. Chichi literally went to the edge on the stairs of that sort of balustrade, balcony, and looked over the edge, like she was contemplating jumping. And then I was put in mind, I was thinking... Are there any animals that actually ever contemplate suicide other than humans? Are there actually, can you imagine a dog throwing themselves off a cliff? Are there any? Lemmings, I mean, lemmings don't knowingly throw themselves off because of the futility of life. They throw themselves off in the vainglorious, optimistic hope that what the lemming in front of them is doing makes total sense and could lead to great fun, enjoyment, and Havana. There you go, subs. Haven't seen that shot in a while, have you? Oh, I don't know why it brings peace. It's the rural nature 
and 2001 A Space Odyssey sci-fi. Sometimes when I think about being a dad and all those times I see people walking through parks with toddlers and what have you, it's funny, all I ever do, I don't, I don't know if anyone else does this, I focus on all the things I didn't do. Or I look at, say like a woman was walking there, child mind over the child, trotting along behind, and the kid looked bored. It's like, I've had a real problem throughout my parenting of whenever the kids are bored, I feel I have to fill it in so badly. But of course you can't keep kids stimulated and entertained all the time, can you? Anyway, I'm wandering the park, beating myself up. And then the other thing that strikes you is whenever you look at everyone else's lives, or they're going about their business, everyone from the outside looking in on their lives, they all look complete and cohesive, and it looks streamlined. Not necessarily easy, but there's a, we have an image, don't we, of people. When we see the image of, when we see images of other people or people come towards us, you always look at them and think of them in terms of what they've got and what you haven't or how together they seem. And of course, the difference is when you climb inside the head of everyone, however together it looks on the outside, inside the head, well, one trusts because one never truly knows. I assume, or what makes me feel a bit more comfortable about my own chaotic thinking, is that really inside every head of every person you pass is total, total carnage. Is that wishful thinking? I don't know. Mark and I have just been talking about how we both tried to vlog today, but we're both so miserable. <laughs> really am. Sorry. But we were like, who do you want to listen to what we've got to say? I'm quite glad it's raining now, because then I feel a bit more like I can be miserable. But actually, we're both saying the same thing, that we feel like we're a bit out of our own bodies. Everything we're doing, we're doing it, but we don't really feel like we're doing it, do we? Well, I did. You saw guys, didn't you? I went to the park, didn't I, earlier today. I don't feel like I went to the park. It's really odd. I don't feel like I'm me. But, as usual, if we actually reduce it down, we're knackered. We are not sleeping enough. And Mark has just had a double espresso at quarter to five. Subs, tell nice, him off. It was nice being in a cafe. No, no, but I'm just saying, it might have been nice being in a cafe, but that double espresso will cause you to be up at four o'clock in the morning. And so actually, though we're both worried about how weird we're feeling, how down we're feeling, how out of it we're feeling, we're actually just really tired. I keep waking up at five. I don't know I why. I keep waking up at 3.30. Just awful. Absolutely I'm convinced awful. I've got prostate cancer. Oh, not that again. We've done yeah. that one, baby. You haven't. Constantly. No, no, no. I'm even toying with shoving my thumb up my ass in the middle of the night. Mark, don't myself. say that. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Why do you always have to reduce everything? That's not reducing it. That's it tired, is. Not sticks. We're talking about sleep. And suddenly you've got your thumb up your ass for well, no reason. I need to pull it out. I think people might need some explanation. Because that's how you treat your prostate. Right, not everyone knows that. Oh, right. Right, Nads. Here. Four. Oh, four. Oh, it's alright, I've got a pair. Four charger leads. Oh, it's alright, I've got charger leads. Oh, you don't need one. I never needed charger You a never need a charger lead. I just lead. need my charger Brilliant. lead to not be stolen. Two for me, one for Maddie, one for Kiki. Yeah, I don't need one you see that? That's why she's do. always borrowing mine. No, I'm never You're borrowing You're always mine. borrowing mine. I just get mine back off you. Yeah, 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 right. No. Right, I can have a Barocca because I'm hoping that that will cheer me up. I'm beginning to wonder whether my life is controlled by Barocca. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, it's sad news. Yeah. Really We're really shocked. Do you know what? I saw his face pop up and I just ignored it. I just, well, I just saw it on too. I just saw the headline, Chadwick Boseman died. And I thought, no, this is a skit. I thought it must be Saturday Night Live or... He's the actor who played Black, Pan Black Panther. You know, yeah, really. and he's died. But I think more importantly for um, anyone of colour, I mean, for a young generation, mm. he transformed the fictional possibilities mm. of youngsters and... He just, you know, it was one. It was a tentpole moment for the African American and Black population of the planet. Black Panther. I think when we saw it, we thought it was all right as a family, uh, but but we missed what it meant as a kind of zeitgeist moment yeah. to a community yeah. that felt underrepresented, yeah. underrecognized, and within you know Marvel kind of went there. So, but yeah, he was labouring under colour cancer. Because for four actually, years. what happened was when we reviewed that film. We didn't see the colour, actually. No, we, we didn't. just reviewed we didn't. the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, in a, in a way, we were behaving exactly as 
a black actor would want an audience to pay, yeah. and not thinking about his colour and what that yeah. meant. But we, yeah. but we did miss a moment, well, like you it was said, a of how important of white it was. Privilege. Yeah, it was the quite privileged because yeah. we didn't understand what that meant. But seeing it, see, just seeing the image today, he's such a forty-three, actor. four years he had colon cancer, didn't tell anyone Quietly. else in the industry. He was recently in the Spike Lee film, The Five Bloods. Oh, I'm really, got, really shocked. Got kids? Don't think so. No, don't think so. Got a wife. Yeah, with his wife and family. I don't know. I mean, oh. I don't know if he does have kids. But, um, I mean, everyone's paying tribute to Kamala Harris, yeah. Joe Biden. We're going to do... Um, Dwayne The Rock. We're going to do a coffee moaning in a minute. Yeah. But, meanwhile, I have managed to convince Mark... Maddie's going to be devastated. She loves, loves him. Wakanda forever. Flipping egg. God. Sorry, go on. So, we are going to... Look, Mark, look, Mark, you're not well, are you, Mark, at the minute? I feel fucking shit. We're, but we're both not feeling great. I'm fed up with it. I, I dread getting up. I dread waking up. I dread coming to consciousness. Terrible, isn't it? I do I a do. bit. I dread it. I just think, oh, uh, that's literally how I feel. I mean, I talked about it in the vlog yesterday, mm. which, don't know when this is going out, but I literally just wake up and just go, mm, yeah, blur, yeah. And, it's know, a bit blur. I think I think lots of you are feeling blur, aren't yeah. you as well? It's just not ungrateful. There's no doubt that there is a gloom across the world, and they're hardly bloody surprising. We're firefighting for ages, just being in lockdown and all of that, and it's just being back in the world. I don't enjoy it, but everything I do, I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, yeah. You know, Lisa rang me yesterday from Westfield. She had to go to Westfield. She went because she's been out. You know, hardly she's hardly been out at all. She said Westfield was murder yesterday. She said every tiny little thing you've got to do, you've got to queue it, you queue for it. You do look at everything you're doing and wonder the sanity of anything you're doing. Well, weirdly, the, the movie reviewer for The Guardian, who, you know, I can't stand Peter Bradshaw, I don't think he's <laughs> anything. No, but he used a phrase in one of his reviews yesterday of something. Um, and he said something along the lines of, we're, we're living in a time where the allure and purpose of most things has been questioned. Yeah. And we're being asked to return. And what we've been to, what we've actually been shown is the impermanence of everything. And really, the shallowness of everything. And that's what I've been driving at for so long, which is, you know, it's not that we can't get back on the bike and do it, but... Do, well, do we, we want to? I, I mean, yesterday, them talking about, I don't know, just sacking people that won't come back. Oh, don't. We talked about it. Because yes. this is what happens to me now. Whenever I send a video, he goes, no, we talked about it. No, 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 it's no, no, like no, he's no. got 20... No. It's like he's got 2,000 no, no, other wives. The government are using the threat. I know. Of if you don't go to work, your I bosses know. might fire you. Now we're yeah. going for morally indefensible to not go back to the offices. When most people's financial lives have been made possible. Yeah. By not doing... Because we, the we were living in an impossible way. The enormous um, slice out of people's... Uh, salary spent on but train journeys. Four hours often on trains. They yeah. gaslight life. the nation into doing stuff they don't need to do yeah. or discover they don't well, need to do. They were saying it blatantly on the news. They were going, we need people back in pet manger We need people buying it. E e e buying stuff said, we don't need. <laughs> so no wonder everyone's pissed off. But anyway, I have convinced Mark to do a stretch this morning. I don't want to do it either. I just did a little post on Instagram saying... Oh my God, I so, so, so don't want to do any exercise or do anything. But we will feel better afterwards. We, yeah. Through lockdown, Mark and I, because we were like on a daily basis sort of chatting with you guys about how we sort of get through that day. And we were talking a lot about, you know, exercise and meditation and all of that. So it, it, it's, I mean, Mark's still doing his Joe Wicks. But in the last two weeks, oh my God, I've been terrible. Sorry, just turning my light off. Absolutely terrible. And I'm just, this week I've been trying to get back into it bit by bit. You haven't been doing a lot of this. But just to start. Oh, I've been better. No, I've been, oh, not from there. But lots of water, lots of stretching, meditation. So we'll take you through it with us. How about that? Oh, it's hot on my top. Oh, it's my belly. <laughs> Sticking out today.
Why do we only ever do those things when we have someone else telling us to do them? I don't know. Why is it that we wouldn't be able to stand there half as meaningfully and, and do, do it, it just for cheap. ourselves? And you wouldn't feel that, like that bit at the end when she says, put your hand on your heart, yeah. you feel that's meaningful because she's told you to. But if I just did that, let me just do it. No, but actually try and do it. Just, no, no, hand on your heart and then you have a hand over the top. And she, when she says, feel your body, it's like, you know, it's just that energy, isn't it? I never do, every time I do it with her, I feel good. But I, I never do it, it at any other as point. as I do it with someone. But if you just do it, like now, guys, if you're feeling anxious, just do that. Put your hand, left hand on your heart, put your other hand over and just feel your body. Close your eyes. It's a bit like... Oh, Mark. Else. I'm trying to get Mark to do the Zap Bush with me, but I don't think he will. Will you not do the Zap Bush? Zap Bush while I watch the news. The coffee moaning. He's got grown older. We made it to the park. And within. Even though neither of us really wanted to go again, within I would say 30 seconds today, it didn't take long. I was like, yeah, yeah, feel yeah, better. Yeah. But we were just uh, reminiscing, in fact, the right word, um, the first days or weeks of lockdown, and we used to come here and. Oh my God. Well, that everyone's point, emotions were so extreme, weren't they? I was in such a state. I thought Russia was going to invade. <laughs> I thought we were going to need military rule. I. Would be, the park was full all the time about what time we came. Yeah. There's people who had irrational Runners rage. Runners spitting, I'd get rageful. I'd I mean, we'd all get so cross. I had irrational rage to any other human. Yeah. You're passing me. Do you remember Maddie You're policing everyone in the me. park? <laughs> Maddie was like, what's going on yeah. here? And, yeah. and I never actually, at that point, I don't think we'd get to this point. No. So we're back to our old park. It's going to be and odd, isn't it? We've got the gloom and doom. And, oh, look at this place. The gloom and doom and the fear of it's coming. It's going to be odd though, isn't it? Looking back at our vlog as yes. a sort of time capsule. Yeah. Sort of video diary time the capsule history. of a period that, yeah. Yeah. I wonder how many people were filming almost consistently throughout it. Yeah, we did every single day. Yeah. We used yeah. in schools. Could be used in schools. But of course you lot. Yeah. You were there all the way through it. You're yeah. a part of it. With the comments. Everything back and forth. It, sort of, it was like everything was drained of colour. It was like everything was sort of monochrome. But then it was really heightened. Don't forget that. No, the it wasn't for was, me. No, we were coming out and going, oh my God, everything looks so good. No, reality was so hyper. Oh, I see. Everything yeah, yeah. was hyper real for yeah. me. Yeah, and yet when I look back, it feels like it was sort of sepia toned. No, yeah, no, it was weird. Really, oh God, it was just so awful. And, and I was just saying to you, was not it? It was that walking along. Everyone was kind of walking out. There were zombies in the park. Yeah, oh, and shit of shock. There was this... I'll leave that with you for a minute. There was this sort of silent, shared experience of horror as you would pass each other by in the park. There was just this knowledge and people would kind of look at each other. And in one way, though not, not in a great way, it was an amazing leveller as well because it didn't matter who you were or what you were or what you were doing. We were all, every single one of us, was going through it together. So, yeah, how far we've come. Hey, Chi Chi, oh. how far we've come. Oh, was that a disgusting one? Toffee does the most disgusting shit. Well, she shouldn't do, she's raw food fed. I know. Must be I mean, something going on. She's getting something somewhere, somewhere else. Because yeah. if you feed your kids, uh, oh, your kids, if you feed your dogs raw food, you do get much better poos. By contrast, for dog lovers, two cheese is always rock hard and easily disposable. I'm sure they're over the moon that we're sharing yeah, this with them. Yeah. Enough oversharing now. Okay. Nad, I'm having one of those sphinxter muscle moments. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Why does Chi Chi only wee in puddles? She loves wee in puddles. Well, it's a bit like you in the bath. But she just did... <laughs> Ma! She just did a massive wee around the corner. She couldn't have had anything left. <laughs> Gigi, come here. Gigi. Look at that, subs. In amongst the bush reeds. That's for you, Nanny Dye. 
my granddad, Granddad Gordon, was always excited about birds that he could point at and look at. And he died, always excited about birds. I've become excited about birds. I like seeing birds. Birds remind me of dinosaurs, do they you? Apparently our dinosaurs are most closely related to Dr. Birds. Or birds are most closely related to dinosaurs. Answer me this, subs. Where do all the squirrels go? Do they genuinely hibernate? And when they hibernate, though they talk about it when you're at school, where do they hibernate? On a tree? On a branch? In a hole? In the floor? In a tree? In your loft? Where? Where? Because it seems to me in the park these days, there's always bloody squirrels around. They don't hibernate. It's like hibernating is a thing of the past. It's hibernating retro. Oh, Chi Chi, rolling. Where is she? There she is, rolling. Oh, nice one, Cheech. Well done. Oh, well, we need to shave her. She's so going to stink. That's us told her. Oh. <laughs> you ever seen a bollock like that? <laughs> <laughs> so here we are, we've gone down the beach. <laughs> we're at the coast. Feels like we're on Venice Beach. The sea's just over there, isn't it, Nads? Yeah. Not. I'm about to have an ice cream fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs>